Do you think Jesus could do anything right here in Las Vegas, Sin City? I believe that what God is doing is he's created an eternal testimony. And what we know is when we can come together under a spirit of unity, nothing will be impossible. Hey, Las Vegas, welcome to another episode of Las Vegas United. I'm your host, Aaron Pino. Here at Las Vegas United, we are partnering with God to create an eternal testimony of his goodness, mercy, and power. And I just want to say thank you so much for joining us this week for a very special guest. Would you help me welcome my friend, Mel Moore? What's <laughs> up, Mel? Hey, everybody. What's going on? Man, I'm, I'm not a whole lot. I mean, we go, we're here today. We're man. here today. We're about to talk today. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, man, I'm so, I'm so grateful to have you on the show. I know I've reached out to you. We've been trying to make this happen for a while. You we know? made it happen, though. We made it. We're here. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it, man. You're a busy man. I'm a, we're a busy man. Uh, we're we're going to have a good time today, man. I'm excited. Absolutely. I'm Absolutely. excited. Uh, but man, to get started, I'd like to do this with, with all the guests. Just tell us a little bit more about yourself, name. How did you line up here in Vegas? All that good stuff, man. Sure. So, of course, Mel Moore, as he said, pastor of church, of course, called Freedom Las Vegas. Yeah. We're uh, at 1203 East Charleston Boulevard, Suite B110, mm. Las Vegas, Nevada. 89104 is our address. Oh, man, you even um, threw the zip code in there. Even threw the zip code in there. Come I on, came, man. I came locked and loaded today. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have church on Saturdays um, at five o'clock. And, awesome. um, you know, we're excited about what God has called us to do in this uh, season, originally from Chicago. Yep. Uh, of course, moved here uh, for ministry to get started on the work that God has called us to do. And we're just excited about the future. Yeah, I'm I'm ex I'm excited about the future too. Absolutely. Because we have Freedom Las Vegas Come up on in the city. Here. Come on, Come man. On. We got the bishop. <laughs> now and more. the Pope. Oh. I'm the bishop, you the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know we joke around like that all the time. I text you, I call you like bishop. I'm like, man, <laughs> if I'm the bishop, Aaron, you're the Pope. I'm like, yeah, I don't absolutely. want that. So yeah, man. And I love it too. You're from Chicago, you know. Born and raised. My wife and I, we 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 lived in Chicago, let's see, for probably about four years. You yeah. know, I mean, we we ha we have a lot of the same friends yeah, yeah. from there in Chicago. Yeah. So when we sat down and we connect, we're like, "Oh man, this, that, yeah, the other." Absolutely, they got that chicken place. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say it, but you <laughs> know, <laughs> we gotta rep the city. Yeah, you, know? you, got, you have Harold's chicken. They try to make one here in Vegas, but you know, <laughs> yeah, we won't talk about that. But uh, yeah, man. So talk to us a little bit about how you how you land up here in Vegas. Um, so I actually came to visit here in Vegas and uh, on vacation, actually. And while I was here, God began to speak to me concerning ministry. Um, and I had never been to Vegas. Vegas wasn't in my view or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, landed here. God began to talk to me. And then the rest is history. Then we started, of course, ministry in 2017. We started ministry and the name of the church then was Free Believers Church. Mm -hmm. um, and then about three years later, we changed the name to uh, Freedom Las Vegas. So our vision is just really simple, is to provide a space for a person to pursue freedom through the word of God. Mm. Um, and I think that everybody needs a space. Yeah. Uh, my background is psychology. Um, and so I understand how the mind works and what yep. people go through and what they deal with. And so everybody needs that space to pursue freedom. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love it. And one thing, too, about you and the church, I mean, y'all get down. <laughs> we do a little something. Uh -huh, yeah, okay, okay. We do a little something. Uh -huh. We do a little something. You know, at, We're we, a very quiet church. We oh, know, yeah, you know? of course, of course. Uh, no, y'all like to have church. You I do. like to have church, too. Yes, you know what absolutely, I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and honestly, like, you know, in the day and age we live in with social media and stuff like that, you can... You can peer in on people yes, you can. without them knowing you yes, peering you in. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll be watching your stuff. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> you better drop that word. Listen, Absolutely. Pastor Mel Moore is a preacher of preachers. Okay. This this man right here. He's being kind. Oh, please. He's being kind. Listen. I'll give you a check later. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Exactly. No, listen, man. The way you, the way you deliver the word. The way you deliver revelation, let me put it like that. You know what I mean? Because it's one thing to just hoop and holler. That's true. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, just yeah. work the emotions yeah. and, and all that stuff. Yeah. I, you know, I, if you don't know this, I don't know if I've ever told you this. My grandfather used to used to pastor a church gone in Christ Church. Wow. Okay. Right here in Las Vegas, man. No, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So we 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 grew up around some stuff. You Absolutely. know what I mean? And we moved to an Assemblies of God church later on in uh in our life. But man, so we've been I've been around some church, you know Absolutely. what I mean? <laughs> and uh 
you know, so I've been around that, you know, hoop and hollering. You get done with the service. I'm like, man, I don't know what just happened. You didn't know what just happened, but you, you feel something, right? <laughs> you feel something. And you got some energy. You, got, you have some energy. But you don't know what happened. <laughs> exactly. And you are wet. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. You're wet. You know, you just been sweating. You know what I mean? But the way you, you bring it, man, is you have that revelation with the delivery. And I mean, yeah. So I, I really like that, man. So, so talk to us a little about. You have the the psychology background. Yes. You're doing Believer's Church Saturday night. <clears throat> yeah. So why pursue the psychology side whenever a lot of pastors just stick to the uh, the theology, the yeah. masters of divinity? You know what I mean? Yeah. Why the psychology aspect of it? Well, so um, m- many people don't know this, but I actually have a degree in religion as well. Mm-hmm. So um, I have both. I have a degree in religion and I have a degree in psychology and I believe in Christ and the couch. Yeah. Um, I on. think it's important to make sure, of course, that you're dealing with, um, you know, things and uprooting them. Um, therapy is actually a part of deliverance. Mm. Um, the Bible says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another yeah. so that you can yeah. be healed. In the original language, the word healed actually means to be restored. Mm. And so a lot of times the reason why we shout and we go home and can't remember anything is because we're so full of ourselves and not full of God. Mm. And so in order to get rid of all of the things that we've picked up over time, um, we have to be able to confess. And I believe that everybody needs a safe place to confess, be honest, be transparent. We don't need you, you know, brushing it up and making it look pretty for all the church people. We want you to be honest and transparent so that you can get rid of yourself so that you can get filled completely with the love of God. Yeah, that's great. I tell people all the time in my church, I said, God believes in counseling. Come on. And I, I get the looks, you know, what I mean? like what? Yeah. I said, he's called the wonderful counsel. Yeah, come on. You know what I mean? Don't stir me. <clears throat> so I, I might just have to. We might have to get that Mount Moore <laughs> preaching up in here. You know what I mean? That's, that's real, though. Yeah. You know, and, you know, um, I I totally understand. Um, you know, we pray for people. We, uh, you know, mm-hmm. this is I've said it before. We cast devils out. Yeah. You know what I mean? We yeah. do all that stuff. Yeah. But there there absolutely is a safe place in a space Mm -hmm. for people to sit down and just say, Hey, look, yeah, this, 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 this happened to me when I was a child, this Mm -hmm. happened to me when I was an adult Mm -hmm. and I'm working through these, these things help me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I heard, I heard several years ago, uh, the great pastor, Rick Warren. Mm-hmm. I love Rick Warren. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, he's an amazing. He's a goat. Yeah. I mean, he's <laughs> amazing. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, he's not a spirit filled believer. He's probably not sitting there casting out devils, mm-hmm. whatever. You know what I mean? But, um, <clears throat> several years ago, he had a tragic thing happen to his family where his son took his own life. Wow. Yeah. And he talked about the mental health, uh, aspect yeah. of a believer. And yeah. he said, someone breaks their arm. We send them to the hospital. Yeah. Someone gets sick, we tell them to 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 take some some medicine. Yeah. If someone is dealing with some mental things, yeah, we tell them just get in the prayer line, let us lay hands on you, right, and cast it out. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Which there is an element to that. Yeah. But I believe that, like how you're saying, there is an element of deliverance that comes through the confessing of sins one yeah. to another. Absolutely. If it wasn't. God wouldn't allow that to be in scripture. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. what would you say to somebody who right now um, is dealing with these things? What, 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 what would be the steps taken, you know, and how does freedom help people? Freedom Church, Freedom Las Vegas, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. How, how do you walk people through that stuff? So I think it's important to understand that the deliverance minister and the therapist should actually work together. Um, those things that that person is confessing through therapy, through counsel, wise counsel, because you also want to make sure that you're getting counseling from somebody who's sober minded. You don't want anybody who is all the way left or all the way right. Mm-hmm. Um, you want them to be sober and grounded in the word of God. So as that person is getting wise counsel, good therapy from an individual, a trusted source, a trusted and licensed, we believe in yeah, licensed on, therapy. Um, then of course it makes it easy to now take those things back 
like to the deliverance minister. It's almost like a script, right? Like when you uh, go to the hospital, they're going to give you your diagnosis. They're going to tell you all the things that you're dealing with. Um, and then you're going, they're going to also give you a prescription and then you're going to yeah. take that to Walgreens or CVS or wherever. And you're going to, of course, get that prescription field. So it's the same thing when it comes to deliverance. You know, I believe in bringing that back to us, all the things that you talked about with your therapist. And I believe in, in, in calling those things out, casting those things out, and then also feeling you with the right things, with the love of God and declaring and decreeing things over your life. Um, the Bible talks about the man, of course, who is washed down, the, the, uh, the, the spirits leave him and then they go seeking, of course, you know, rest and they can't mm -hmm. find any. And then they come back to the home that they once, you know, were in. And I, I believe that the reason why they were able to come back is because the Bible doesn't talk about the fact that the man needed to be filled. Mm -hmm. He was empty, but he wasn't <clears throat> filled with anything. Right. So it's important not just to pray for people or not just to cast the thing out, but we counsel as well because because we want to fill you with the right things so that when warfare happens, when those tragedies happen, when those things come up, when those triggers come up, we want you to be able to have the right tools to fight them. Yeah, absolutely. I like how you brought up the, the scripture element of it. Yeah. <clears throat> Cause you're right. It says that the, that the demons went out. Yep. It says they went to a dry place and yep. they couldn't find rest. Couldn't find rest. And they came back to the house, found mm -hmm. it swept in order. They came back to a familiar place. They yep. came back to a familiar place that was that was that was clean, yeah. swept in in order. Yeah. But there was nothing that was filling that void. Yeah. Yeah. And so it says they went out and they got more and they said, Hey, come on, we found we found a place that we yep. don't have it again. Absolutely. And I think that is really vital in filling those empty spaces. Mm -hmm. Um with the spirit of God, with the word of God, with godly counsel. Yeah. That way you don't go back to those things. Yeah. That way those things don't come back to you. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, I was just talking with actually on the way to the show today, mm -hmm. a spiritual son of mine, he's walking through some things. Yeah. And I was, you know, I'm not a licensed counselor. Let me just put that out, <laughs> out right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm a spiritual advisor. That's yeah. how I like to put it. You know Absolutely. what I mean? That's where my degree is at is spirituality. Um, but I was walking through some things with him. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, look, you've you've gotten free mm -hmm. in times past. Yeah. But because you haven't had a plan mm. to maintain that freedom, come on, you've lost it. Yeah, and so you you have to get free. Yeah, but then you need to have a course of action. Yeah, to stay free. Yeah. So talk talk into that a little bit. Well, I, I actually just preached a sermon uh, on Pentecost. Actually, I preached a sermon called "The Assignment of a Sound." Mm. And I talked about. Let me um, just pause right there. <laughs> that title is amazing. The assignment of the sound. The I'm telling you, y'all need to get sound. to freedom, Las Vegas, and hear this man preach. But go ahead, Pastor. So I preached a sermon on Pentecost called "The Assignment of a Sound," and the Bible says, of course, in Acts two, that the sound comes from heaven. The sound gets in the people, fills the room, right? And then it also says the sound begins to gather the people. Mm -hmm. So the sound that comes from heaven has an assignment, and I believe that there is not just a sound Sound that comes from heaven, but there are also sounds that come from hell. There are things. Oh, yeah. The definition of, of a sound is a pattern of disturbance of disturbance that travels through air, water, whatever channel that it travels through. And the thing that stuck out to me the most about the definition is that it's a pattern of disturbance. Mm -hmm. So there are many things, of course, that are in our lives that have been called to be patterns of disturbance. Now, what I also believe is, I believe that we've been called to be patterns of disturbance. We're supposed to disturb sickness. Yeah. We're supposed to disturb generational curses. There are many things that we've been called to break and to handle and to dismantle yeah. for the kingdom of God. But if we're not careful, the wrong sound can get inside of us because trauma speaks, Man. fear speaks, Man. loneliness speaks, anxiety speaks. All of these things have a sound. And the crazy thing is that there are certain people who are only attracted to you when your sound is off. There are certain people who are attracted to you in your loneliness. There are certain people who are attracted to you in your anxiety, yeah. in your fear. And once that sound goes away, those people tend to go away as well. So a part of creating this new on the inside of you is changing your sound. And we have to make sure, of course, that we establish a new sound. And that's what deliverance and counseling is all about. Establishing a new sound so that you attract the right things. 
you are a bad man. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. I'm here with the Pope. <laughs> oh, whatever. But I mean, the revelation on that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> sound is, is, is an incredible thing. Yeah. If you read in scripture, mm-hmm. heaven is always preceded by a sound. Come on. Always. Come on. Uh, in the beginning, in Genesis, mm-hmm. it says that the earth was out form and void. Yeah. But then the Lord spoke. Yeah. Yeah. yeah God yeah. releases a Come sound. On. Come on. And then heaven was beginning to be created on earth. Yeah. In the Garden of Eden and the Holy Spirit's doing his thing. Mm-hmm. You go to John the Baptist. They said, who are you, John? Are you the prophet? Are you the one to come? Are you the Messiah? He said, no, I'm I'm the voice. I'm come the on. sound in the come wilderness. Come on, come on. Prepare the way for the king to come. That's right. Anyway, I could keep on going, but That's heaven's right. preceded by a sound. But I like how you pull out hell has a sound too. Yeah. And how different people are attracted to the sound that you carry. Yeah. Um, that's an incredible revelation right there. Yeah. That I'm probably going to think about and unpack and I'm probably going to preach. <laughs> steal your message. It's yours, you know what I mean? Bro. I'm probably going to steal that. <clears throat> but it's so true. And I love how you um, associated the counseling and the freedom ministry to changing the sound that you carry. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, that's what we do as as ministers, yeah. as preachers of the gospel. Absolutely. Is we are affecting destinies. Come on. Is we are helping people go, not just bad people become good people. Yeah. We're helping dead people become alive people. Come on, come on. And the ultimate thing that we're doing is we're transforming lives. That's and that's right. what you that's what you guys are doing there at Freedom. Yeah. Uh, that's what we're doing at our church. That's what God is doing in Las Vegas. That's right. What I love is is God's heart and mind is on our city. Yeah. So much so that he said, hey, Mel, I want you to move to Las yeah. Vegas and, yeah. and deposit what you carry. Absolutely. Incredible, man. Bless you, man. Uh, absolutely incredible. So you guys have some things coming up. I know you, um, you talk to me about this this conference you yeah, guys so have our, coming up in August. Our conference is actually August 26th and August 27th. It's actually our first Freedom Conference. We just did our first Freedom Revival. And then now we're about to do the Freedom Conference on Friday in the 26th. We're actually going to do a, um, kind of uh, an old school just prayer um, mm. that's going to start at like 7 o'clock. And then, of course, on Saturday, we'll have our regular service only it won't be regular. Uh, it'll be our Freedom Conference. And we're also going to have some classes as well. Um, so feel free. You can actually find us on social media at freedomlv.church. All of our handles are freedomlv.church. So whether you're on YouTube, you're on Instagram, you're on Facebook, um, even on TikTok, it's freedomlv.church. Um, and you can find us there. You can go to our link tree. You can look at our information yeah. uh, to keep up with uh, the conference and what we're doing. But I believe it's going to be very powerful. Yeah, the conference. <clears throat> and listen, y'all like to have church. Man. We do. We do. <laughs> but what I, but I'm telling you, man, what I love is 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 the is is the the addition to what you bring as well. You yeah. love church, you love God, you love picking them up and putting them down. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how we like to say it. Right, right, right. But then you also give the practical insight um in in the mental awareness and and how to develop your inner man and absolutely becoming free and actually walking this thing out outside of a Sunday morning experience. Absolutely. Why do you think that is like in church culture, we've developed this thing and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of it too, but we, where we just hype people up on a Sunday and we send them on the way and they, and it's just like, <laughs> that was a great experience, but here's where's the transformation. Um, we do it because that's how we've seen it done. Mm. Um, and to be honest with you, it's been a generation of pattern of this is what we do, um, because that's what we've seen done. We've seen the main thing be Sundays um, with not a lot of in between. Um, and so I think that it's important to if we're going to build the people, because you got to remember, social media is heavy today. Mm-hmm. So if you're not uh, if if you're not influencing your people through the assignment and the word that God has called you to influence your people through, then they're being influenced by something. Right. Um, and people are being influenced every day. So you have to make sure that you're carrying out the assignment of God and influencing those that uh, that have been called to hear your voice. Um, there are people who have been assigned to your sound. Um, and so you have mm. to make sure, of course, that you are doing the work to make sure that they are being built the way God has called them to be built. Mm. Yeah. 
<laughs> He's going to preach it. Yeah, I already know. Well, listen. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> uh, no, I love it. You know, because I'm, I'm a musician. I'm a worship yeah. leader. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so sound is, is huge. People yeah. are assigned to your sound. Yeah. I mean, that's just so good. Yeah. That's just so good, man. I'll pack that just a little bit more. Come well, there, on. There's always a sound that's drawing you. Um, we know like, and I, I use this analogy, even in our church, like if you turn on the radio and your favorite song comes on, then it's going to begin to change your mood. So there are different sounds that happen. There are certain things that we let into our ear gate. There are certain things because sound is a vibration. Uh, so if you put a sound through water, you can see the, the vibration moving. Right. So there are certain things that we let into our eye gate and uh, learn certain things that we let into our ear gate. And I just believe also that uh, demonic influence comes in through the five senses anyway, mm. um, through touch, through smell, through taste, all of the five senses, that's how it comes in. So a part of that, of course, is changing the structure of what you've been introduced to, reintroducing you to the proper thing and the proper sound. And that's why I think it's so important. That's why you have to stay in worship. Yeah. You got to stay in prayer. We, like I, we, we were talking about this before. Uh, we're not trying to create a culture where we have to lie our way through right. um, life. We're creating a culture where we can be honest and transparent about where we are and what we're going through without feeling that shame of who's going to talk about me, who's going to this, that and the other. Like we all got things. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's about being honest. It's about being transparent um, so that you can help your brother, and help your sister. Yeah. I like how you said we all have things yeah. in, in my family. <laughs> Like, not because we're talking about anybody, but we just, we all got issues. Yeah, come on. We all got yeah. issues. I mean, <clears throat> whether it's the way we were raised or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, we yeah. all have stuff. But to be able to to go to a place and be a part of a community where you can not have to put on the facade. Yeah. Not have to be like... Hey, how are you doing? I'm blessed and highly flavored. Come on, highly flavored. Cause, cause I'm, because I'm the I'm the salt of the earth. Come you on. know what I mean? It's like, listen, come on, sister so and so. Look, come I'm, on. I, let's let's just how you really do. Yeah. You and know the, what I mean? the crazy thing about it, if I can be honest, many of our character flaws actually come from the way we we were raised. Mm -hmm. So things that we were introduced to based on how we were raised or things that we saw, um, some some other person may say, oh, we weren't raised like that. And that's totally wrong. But if you saw it, of course, as you were growing up, it's normal to you mm -hmm. while someone else may deem it to be a character flaw. Oh, yeah. So a part of that is just being patient with one another, mm. um, waiting on one another to change, to evolve, to adapt um, and not making our ourselves more perfect than what we really are yeah that's that's true you know and that's yeah. i feel like that's like that's just life you know yeah, yeah. working with people come on come i can't on. articulate it like the bishop can't oh, you know stop. what i'm saying <laughs> 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 but at the end of the day that's what we're doing is is in life in ministry yep. um <clears throat> you have to deal with people yeah you have to deal with people. Yes, you do. Whether you're at the grocery store or yeah. whether you're going to church yeah. or whether you're working at your job. Yeah. You have to deal with people. Absolutely. And so how do we, you know, I'm, it's finding the way how we serve and wait on people. Yeah. When people are always people. Yeah. But the, I think the key is to deal with people how Christ deals with you. Mm. Um, and we have to make sure that we deal with people how Christ dealt with us. If, if Christ allowed you to go through your stuff and get yourself together and get your mind together and mm -hmm. he allowed you to make mistakes and everything, we can't be so harsh. There's actually a parable uh, in the Bible about that, where the, the gentleman goes to, the I believe, the king and he owes money mm -hmm. and the king pardons him. The leader pardons him and says, all right, I'm going to wipe your debt. But then there's a gentleman who owes that gentleman money and he goes to collect. <laughs> and then the leader says, the ruler says, wait a minute. I've wiped your debt. Why are you collecting mm -hmm. from him? And so that's what we do, though, in life. We ask for grace. We ask for mercy. We ask for forgiveness. And then we'll turn around and not show that same grace or that same mercy to our brothers and our sisters. Yeah. So we have to deal with people how Christ deals with us. Yeah. Yeah. So basically you're saying that that guy went Chicago on him. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> he was forgiven. He said, where's my money? There you go. Where's my money? You better come over here with my money. No, but it's so true. I like how you put that, you know, deal with people how Christ deals with us. Yeah. Um, we're coming to a close here. I'm going to tell this last story and then we're going to wrap this up. But I remember uh, talking with a mentor of mine and he was going through some things with an adopted kid of his. Yeah. And I remember sitting at the table 
with a couple different people and it was just a bad situation. Mm -hmm. And someone at the table so ignorantly mm -hmm. said, when are you just going to let them go and just let them do their thing mm -hmm. and forget about them? And I remember this mentor, his wife was sitting next to him and, and she just kind of said, well, we'll forget about him. Let it go whenever Jesus forgets about us and lets us go. Mm -hmm. And that stuck with me yeah. because the reality is, is we can throw people to the wayside so easily mm -hmm. whenever Jesus is saying, look, when you were my enemy, yeah. I wanted to become your friend. Come on. Whenever you were lost, yeah. I left everything to come find you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And so dealing with people and having that, that grace and patience with people, I think that's one of the great ways we can actually express, express Christ yeah. to people around us. Yeah, I often say this, and I know you're about to close, but I often say this, in Christ's death, he saved us. But in his life, he taught us how mm -hmm. to suffer. So in the death of Christ, he saved us, uh, gave us salvation. But through his life, he taught us how to suffer. Mm -hmm. And we have to make sure that we take in both. Yeah, we have yeah. to. We have to. Yeah. If I know we. All right. For I'm going to say this one last thing. Yeah. We'll close, okay. But for real. We could keep going on. I, his life, I know we could. Yeah. His life. He he learned, you know, how to suffer. Yeah. The Bible says, yeah. you know, through vehement cries and tears and mm -hmm. prayers. Mm -hmm. He learned obedience mm -hmm. through the things that he suffered. Come on. So we want to just chalk everyone off to the side and think we have it all going on. But the reality is not like, no. Yeah. You got to go through the process yeah. because at the end of the day, we want you free. Yeah. At the end of the day, we want you to represent Christ. Yeah. At the end of the day, take off the masks and let's just come on. Let's do this mm -hmm. thing. And I think you guys do that so well at Freedom Man. So oh, man. as we're coming to a close, tell people how can they get involved with what you have going on, man. Absolutely. Talk, talk about that. So again, on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, it's just uh, at freedomlv.church. So at freedomlv.church. Really simple. You can just use that to reach us on all of our platforms. Uh, you can click on our link on there. You can see what we have going on. Uh, you can fill out the information that's on there as well. And we would love to have you and host yeah. you on any given Saturday and especially for our Freedom Conference. Freedom Conference. Give yeah. us those dates again. August 26th and August 27th. Um, yeah. Um, the Friday, of course, we'll be doing prayer Friday night. So you can come in, make sure you dress comfortable, bring your jogging pants or whatever, mm -hmm. bring a pillow <laughs> so you can lay out. And then Saturday, of course, will be our service. Yeah, I'm going to have to swing through on that. Come thing. through, man. Yeah, come I'm going to have to do that. Awesome. Mel, thanks for being here today, man. Love I you, man. Appreciate, appreciate you. Love you too. Hey, and listen, I want to thank you. Thank you so much for joining this week on Las Vegas United. I say it every single week. If you're watching this on Keen 17, thank you so much for watching this. Set your DVR, get these wherever you're watching. We're right there on King 17. If you're watching on Facebook, uh, YouTube, would you go ahead and like our channel? Would you go ahead and subscribe to the channel? And listen, if you're listening to this on Spotify or iTunes, share this with somebody. Let them know what's going on right here in Las Vegas. But listen, we will see you next time right here on Las Vegas United. God bless you. Hey, Las Vegas, we appreciate all your support for our show. Next week, Pastor Aaron talks with Brandon Bourbon, who is planting a new church in Northwest Las Vegas called Pivot Church. Brandon shares all the joys and trials of being called to a new city, as well as the God-sized vision that has been on his heart long before his journey even began. Our show is hosted by Pastor Aaron Pino of Overflow Church. To learn more about him and his ministry, please visit overflowchurch.co. The guest this week is Mel Moore of Freedom Church in Las Vegas. You can follow them on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok at freedomlv.church. Las Vegas United is produced by CTN Vegas, the Las Vegas location for the Christian Television Network. For more information about CTN Vegas and our show, please visit ctnvegas.com.